After low voter turnout and more than 4,000 spoiled ballots in the primary, Dr. Velma Harper's just glad to be still in the running in the weeks leading up to the general election. Congratulations, Dr. Harper. Thank you very much. I'm so excited. I know I placed number 15, but I don't think the numbers mean much at this point. At number 15 on the Republican vote count, the senatorial contender just made the list of candidates who still have a shot at elected office this November. Only 30 of 38 total senatorial candidates in Saturday's primary made the general ballot. 15 Republicans and 15 Democrats. For number 15 Democrat Jonathan Diaz, the election wasn't easy to watch. What I believe needs to be corrected is, is uh, again, voter education. And uh, my reactions was, it was very nerve-wracking to, to be uh, at number 14 and then jump down to 15 and then we, there were some discrepancies between 12 midnight and 3 o'clock a.m. But for all the frayed nerves, the consensus among players and spectators alike is usually the same in the senatorial, despite lingering questions over so many spoiled ballots. If a person was not successful for a legislative slot in this election, it's probably along all accounts, it's better to move on and try harder in the next election because what happens is people uh, who are right at the margin, if they have this sour grapes kind of effect. So bygones be bygones? Maybe try again next election? Dr. Dennis Borja lost to Dr. Harper over the weekend. Spoil ballots, we call that fortunes of war. Things happen, you know. You could be the best candidate, most intelligent, have the best equipment, best ads best everything and still not get elected because something happened. That's a really significant number, especially considering that the voter turnout was, again, to my understanding, a record low. Um, so unfortunately, I think they really could have meant a lot for those on the edge, which includes myself. Um, but like Dr. McNinch said, I guess those are the results and uh, what can we do?